Non, mais il décolle pas vraiment. Welcome to Wine on Main TV. I'm your host, Eric Tanzi. Today we have a super exciting show for you today. I have Mark Morrow sitting here with me. He is from the Fine Wine Trading Company, also North Carolina's official uh, distributor of Riedel wine glasses. And after sitting down and talking with him about Riedel and glassware, I thought, we've got to show this to the people because it is, one, super exciting, and two, super important to get the most bang for your buck out of your wine. Uh, so without further ado, thank you so much, Mark, for joining us today. And tell us about how important glassware is and why it's so interesting. Well, thank you, Eric. Um, happy to be here. Excited to be here. Um, glassware is extremely important, but like many many of us, um, I never really realized how important until I had it explained to me, which is why I'm here to spread the word. Um, the Riedel family has been in the glass business since the late 1300s. Uh, it's over. Or, uh, Late 1600s, sorry. 1600s, so Over 300 time. years, 12 generations of family. Um, everything from stained glass to radar tubes in World War II, um, which is ultimately the radar tubes are what got them into the glass, the fine wine glass business, because it was Klaus Riedel that was running the family at the time, and they were making to you know Austria was on the side of Germany, and they lost. <laughs> so when you lose the war, you're the bad guys. Right. And so, um, even though it's not like he was out there like personally murdering Americans, but uh, he ended up uh, in jail for 10 years for war crimes. The war crimes being making radar tubes that helped intercept, you know, Allied bombers that were bombing Germany. <laughs> so, while he was in prison, he met some people that were in the wine business. And up to that point, um, you know... A, a fine wine glass was a, was established as a wine glass that had lots of colors and stained glass, ornaments, jewels, bedazzlings, if you will. I like that so one. So like better. this one? Yeah, that's that's a very bedazzling wine bedazzling glass, glass you know. And um, but Klaus, and also oh, it was it Walter and Klaus actually, father and son? They came up with this idea of let's make a glass that makes wine taste better. And they started studying the science of how wine breathes, how it tastes, how our mouths work, how our noses work. And they came up with a series of glasses. And the, uh, the actual first varietal specific glass was they produced is in 1956. So that was wow. the birth of what we call the modern wine glass. So no, no bedazzling, no jeweling, just simple, elegant, gets the job done. So, um, and you've tried some wine in the regular Riedel glass, right. but not in any of the varietal specific no. glasses. So you, you're actually complete fresh meat here, which is <laughs> yeah. nice. Um, so we'll just start, I'm going to treat it like you just don't know anything at all. We're going to take, um, we're going to focus on one of the white glasses and one of the red glasses just to keep it short. But if you want to hear about all the glasses, you have to come to our seminar that we're doing in October. Yeah, I think we're going to do it in October. No, it's so November. November? We yeah, it doesn't have that information. It'll be out on Facebook. Just follow us on Facebook, and we'll put it out there. But we are going to do a, a whole Riedel glass class in the, in the house with lots of different wines. Yes. So. Stay so tuned. we'll start out. We're going to do. We're going to focus focus on the Sauvignon Blanc glass, and we're going to do a nice Sauvignon Blanc from Chile, Southern Hemisphere, um, doing great wines. Chile, especially known for some really classic, crisp Sauvignon Blancs. So. I'm going to treat you just like I treat anybody at the system. We'd like to use a two ounce. That's our magic little pour. So you can grab that up and do your standard wine drill. Take a look at it. Give a swirl. But before we get into smelling and tasting, I want you to do an additional step. Hold the glass over your head and tip it as far on its side as you can go without spilling any wine. It's dangerous. Notice the shape that the, gla the wine is making in the glass. Kind of like an egg. It's an egg, but is it? Sh it's sharp at the point yes, towards yeah. the front. It's, so it's very like spearhead like shape. Like an arrowhead. Yes, exactly. So the reason for that, Sauvignon Blanc, very crisp, very high acid, not always the sweetest grape, however. Um, your tongue tastes sweet on the tip. It tastes sour on the sides. So this glass focuses that wine towards the spot that makes things taste sweeter. To compensate for the acidity. 
Correct. Okay. So this is called the Sauvignon Blanc glass, but any high acid white, Gruner Veltliner, um, you know, a lot of your European, uh, you know, any of your white Bordeaux from France, um, Verdejo from Spain. Chinon. Chinon, you know, any, any crisp high acid white will work great in this glass, but we just loosely call it the Sauvignon Blanc glass. But uh, how does it smell? Oh, it smells fantastic. Definitely. The aromas just pour out. Just, it just hits you. Uh-huh. Go ahead and take a sip, see what you think. Mmm. That's a good wine, first off. <laughs> I didn't bring it. <laughs> I know I'm not going to bring dogs I know, it's not, video. I know it's not about the wine, but yeah. um, I do like the herbaceous... Uh, Herbaceousness that this wine provides. Very nice. But yeah, I can definitely see that the acidity has kind of been displaced and um, the mouthfeel is very nice. And just holding this glass, I can tell that, like, I just feel fancy. You know, and th that's something I forgot to mention. I, I glossed over that. That one thing, one of the areas that they devote a lot of attention to is balance and feel. All of these glasses are perfectly balanced so that at the place where you tend to grab a glass, <laughs> it's like perfect. It's like, and that's where you grab a glass. So it doesn't feel top heavy. You know, a lot of glasses, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not balanced well. This guy's bottom heavy. You know, they're, people don't put that thought in there. The Riedel's, this is all they do. They got a lot of time to think about the <laughs> details. So they've really knocked out the details. Oh, good. You left some. But I did. I don't think you left enough, though. Okay. So, so now we're going to go, let's go, to, let's pick on the groom. So take, I'm just augmenting your portion there. So now, do the same drill. Wow, this first, class is, first of all, I've, this class is very heavy. It's very heavy. It's a lot very, heavier than the other one. How does it smell? Do you notice a difference in oh, how it yeah, smells? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, like the wine itself, almost, you know how when you smell something acidic, and, and your mouth typically will salivate to kind of just get you ready for the amount of acidity that's going to your mouth. When I smelled the wine earlier, it had almost more melon qualities, even though definitely the juice inside of that glass was acidic and more grapefruit mm -hmm. and um, maybe a little bit of that green pepper kind of thing going on. But smelling it in this glass, I almost don't get any of that. And my mouth is already starting to kind of want to compensate for the acidity. So I know that you can't really smell acidity. But you can sense the acidity. But you from can smelling sense it in the exactly. Glass. Well, and you're describing exactly. I have a a simple way of saying it is that this glass brings out the pretty. That glass brings out the ugly. <laughs> like you smell when I smell in one of those glasses, and not that specific glass, but when I smell in a non-Riedel glasses versus smelling wine in a Riedel glass, I smell the I smell the the soil, the rock, the gravel, but I don't get the fruit, the floral, the right. flowers, the, the juicy, the delicious things are muted. The, the tertiary flavors that are nice for complexity, but they're not the only thing you want to be tasting. They tend to be lifted in these, these types of glasses. Just tasting this from this glass. Now, now you've I tasted. I mean, immediately. Did that not back up what I, I mean, just said? immediately. Like, the only thing that I could really g gather out of this is just what you said, uh, is, uh, you know, those earth qualities, but the acidity on the sides, on the tongues, just, is, that's the first thing you notice. Yeah, hold this up and, and show the shape that this makes. It's still a spear. It's more of a, just but a But it's more spear, just a straight just a oval instead of the, the yeah. fat at the bottom and right. pointy at the front. So this does, this has two bad things going for it. First off, the general shape is just the generic wine glass shape. Also, this has what we call in the industry the speed hump. The speed on. You got that little roll <laughs> ridge. So as that wine's coming in your mouth, it goes. You ever see it go ra rafting? You yeah, see what water yeah. does when it goes over a rock? <laughs> That's what the wine's doing. So it's just going anywhere it wants in your mouth. So there's no control at all, regardless of the shape of the glass. If it has a speed hump on it, you're destined for um, disappointment, basically. And, and just like talking about it, because when you drink out of the, the, the nicer glass, I was wondering, I wanted to hold the wine, I wanted to look at it more, I wanted to swirl it, I wanted to smell it. Being in this glass, all I'm thinking about is just taking that next sip to try to compensate for the, the acidic blast that I just had. Like I need something else for my palate to have. Yeah. And you know, maybe hoping that you're gonna get something different. 
So I think you would probably even drink the wine slower with the real glass. Yeah. So the final proof is always going back. Going back. Go back to the real nut. Because, you know, maybe it's just a trick of the palate. You know, maybe we just tricked you because your first tip oh tastes gosh. better or something. But it smells better, doesn't it? It works both ways. <laughs> the real the Riedel glass wins every time. I'm really, really impressed by this. This is. Tell me the difference between Riedel glass and, you know, these big heavy glasses. This one's obviously lighter. Good question. So, and it's not just Riedel. There are other producers that make crystal glasses, but um, the main thing with Riedel is that they're varietally shaped. They're the pioneers in the varietally shape. But for a little 101 on the different types of glass, um, the majority of the glasses on this table, with the exception of the five here that are made by Riedel, are all made from regular glass. I don't know what the scientific name is, but it's the same glass that's in windows and everything else. Looked at under an electron microscope, this glass is smooth. It has a very smooth surface. Um, and then when you get into crystal glass, crystal glass has a wavy surface. So it, um, and what that wavy surface does is it helps rip apart the wine molecules, lets the releasing estimers, esters and polymers makes it better to taste, better to, it, it intensifies the flavors and intensifies the aromas that come out of the glass. The third step is leaded crystal. This is, uh, there's lead-free crystal and leaded crystal. These glasses are all lead-free. Leaded crystal is the most fragile of all, but also it, it does give you even better taste because the, instead of a wavy line, it has a sharp zigzaggy line which really tears those molecules up. The downside is that those, that zigzaggy line makes them very fragile. So if you've had a set of nice crystal glasses before, they've probably been leaded, and you've probably experienced the pain of washing it and feeling your thumb just go right through it, or twisting the stem off the bottom as you're drying it. Right. We've all been there. Or you just like set it down a little too hard and the whole thing collapses in your hand. They're very fragile. Um, the leaded crystal that the Riedel glasses are made from is dishwasher safe. Not only uh, is it stronger, you would never do this with leaded crystal, <laughs> but it is also that that smooth waviness instead of the sharp jagged keeps uh, prevents soap scum from building up. The, you know, with the those jags, let soap get trapped in there, it makes it really hard to rinse out. So if you were crazy enough to wash your lead, leaded crystal glasses in the dishwasher, by the third or fourth time you wash them, they're going to be opaque. You see cloudy. So the, the lead-free crystal is definitely the way to go. In the olden days, when they first started doing crystal glasses in the 50s, they didn't have the technology to make optical clarity without the lead. So they had to use lead to keep the glass from being really wavy looking. Right. But nowadays, uh, with modern production techniques, we don't need lead, so we now have lead-free crystals. Lead-free crystal, and that's the best and of both that's worlds. The, it's that's still, the, it's wavy, but they're smooth edges instead smooth of edges. sharp edges. And so when he's talking earlier about like esters, and for all, for all you science geeks out there and people who want like the proof, and, I, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around, you know, versus this being just a scam, or is it truth, <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, after testing it, it's truth, um, is that when, when you have that smoothness and the esters, which are the alcohols and the, the acids in wine, I, I'm assuming that as they're going over these smooth surfaces, that's what's changing the, the aroma or the bouquet of, of It's creating of the juice a turbulence. Inside. It's creating a turbulence that helps, you know, molecules like to get excited. Sure. So at a molecular level, you're exciting the wine just as it's clinging to the side of the glass. It's getting excited. Whereas the wine sitting in the center of the glass is just, hey, bud, what's up? <laughs> you know? But those ones on the side of the glass are like, like me, super excited. around, <laughs> and, you know, spazzing out a little bit, and that's in the. I'm no science major, but in the, either, in right. the in the molecular biology world, that excitement is good. Right. So you know, it definitely comes alive when you when you're yeah. literally smelling the wine in these glasses. It, it this is the difference in the smell alone, which. 85% of what you, what you taste comes from what you smell, so that is super important Very true. That, the, uh, the, that the aromas in the wine are, are being set free. And you're actually, without any, this is awesome, this is serendipity, because you're creating the perfect segue to talk about the Pinot Noir glass. Well, let's talk about the Pinot let's Noir talk, glass. And if we're going to talk about the glass, we should have some good Pinot Noir, too. <laughs> 
So do the do the same drill with this guy. Check. Can I can I have can I just pour it a little bit in this because I mean let's be honest we've all at one time in our life sure we have we have tasted but this fine is, wine. This is low hanging fruit. And, and you know what's here. funny you know what's funny though is that because a lot of people come in here and they'll be like well I drink my wine out of a mason jar can you drink this wine out of a mason jar well I'm I'm gonna answer the question for you in just here a second go. so that's fine. Perfect. So, which one do you want me to do first? You want me to go from the Pinot Noir glass first? Yeah, go for the Pinot Noir glass first. Because I, I like starting with the Riedel, then going down to the <laughs> whatever you want to compare it to, and, uh, and then going back to the Riedel. So here's the notice with this glass. When you do the hold it back up on the side there. Notice that you can get the glass basically 180, well 90 degrees horizontal. Um, wow. So that's, I was talking about the segue into the Pinot Noir. The red glasses, the shape is important, of course, to where it centers the wine on your tongue, but even more important is the breathability. You notice the red glasses are always bigger than the white glasses. This is for swirling, and remember what's happening to the wine when it's running along the side of the glass? It's getting excited. So our swirling is not just for breathing, it's also the excitement of the molecules, and this thing is a huge aroma amplification chamber. Basically, this big bowl shape, this gets all those flavors and just sends them right to your face so that you can just... <sighs> I'll, I, I'll split the difference between mason jar and Riedel and just go with a standard wine glass. Oh, you know what? I can't even smell. And by the way, this has got a phenomenal smell to it. Um, very, very intense yeah, and powerful on, aromas like coming back. I can't smell anything. I, just, I can't smell anything from the. Uh, I can't smell anything. So if eighty-five percent of what you taste comes from what you smell, and you will literally be tasting eighty-five percent of nothing. Recovering from a cold, you know, and I'm just like, hmm, it smells nice. Wow, <laughs> that's really good wine. That's just amazing. Huh? We're... So, how much do these cost typically, and what? Why would you want to spend fifteen dollars? on a glass, on, on a set of glasses versus $100 on a set of glasses? Well, for starters, 15 is high. With the most, these usually retail right around 10 or $11 a piece. Okay. So they're very affordable. This is the restaurant series, which, um, you know, it's kind of an exclusive that we're getting them. Um, so for, you know, let's, let's say it's $11 a glass. That's a great investment because this glass can transform a $15 bottle of wine into tasting as good as a $20 bottle of wine. Mark, thank you so much. Um, you know, I just, I have learned so much today and it has been such a pleasure and it has so much fun and, you know, the day is young. So yeah. I think we could probably uh, go sit back and Drink have some more wine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but not in these, right? Not in these. Well, I, I need one of those. Yeah. So, I mean, should we should we toast these or? Yeah, I think we should try drinking Riedel though. So you know, to Riedel, eh? <laughs> <So>, yeah, Riedel. <Riedle. laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Pleasure.